This video is going to show how to use the G-code system in our C4 software. So uh, essentially in our toolbox this is a list of all the instructions that the machine can perform. One of those is it can um, just run a G-code file. So we're going to insert a G-code file into our main program list and then just click on it and then we can switch over to the G-code editor where we can actually edit G-code. So we'll do something like G1 x0, y0, z0, and then feed 100. Okay, and then we'll tell it to go to, um, say, x1 inch, and then y1 inch. I'll just capitalize that, we don't really have to. And then what I can do is just hit update. And if I zoom fit that, you'll see that it creates this simple shape. This is zero right here, moves to x of one, and then y of one. I can do it toolpath simulation to just show where the machine is going to go. Okay, So now let's go ahead and do a G2 and we'll give it a radius of 1 and we'll tell it to go to X3. So that should give us a radius there. Okay, And then we'll go ahead and just go back to G1 mode and Y0 and then we'll hit update. Okay, And then we'll go ahead and just go to X of 4 inches. Okay, so I just programmed a simple uh, kind of a tangent entry onto a radius, and I can show what the machine's going to do with this slider bar here. And um, now if I was actually connected to the machine, I could just hit cycle start, and the machine is actually running now and cutting out that shape. Okay, so um, uh, pretty basic, but I think you'll find that uh, just the G-code editing system is uh, pretty powerful to compare others. So um, yeah, so let's go back over here to our main um, program list. So this is a the G-code file that contains this shape that we just created. I'm going to go ahead and comment that out. And then I'm going to insert another G-code file. And this time I'm going to select from a file that I already have on this computer here. And it's this more complicated um, G-code file that was created with a uh, cam system, an external um, cam system. So um, in this case I can click on the G-code file again and look at the G-code directly. This is not something that a human can really edit because there's just too many lines of G-code. I mean, you, you, could, you could try but you wouldn't get too far. So um, with this the same thing we can do a toolpath simulate so we can see it going around and then the kind of the, you know, the, the this, the, the, the instruction is going to use to cut this out. Okay, um, And then of course if I'm connected to a machine we can hit cycle start again and the machine is now running and just like any other conventional machine you can see the g-code kind of whizzing by especially with a toolpath like this you're going to go by pretty quick. Um, so let's see I can uh, do something like go ahead and stop the machine here and then I can just we'll go ahead and just scroll down until we find uh, like this instruction right here so I just highlight that instruction, I click on cycle start with options, and I can say run from selected line. So what that's going to do is that's actually going to start from that line rather than starting at the beginning of the program. It'll start from that line and just continue from there. Okay. So it's just another feature that we have. You can start anywhere from the middle of a program. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and show a couple more of the features. Um, so let's come back over here to our CAM operations again. And over here is where I have my two different G-code programs that are loaded in memory. I can, of course, comment out the, the, the larger one, and I'll comment back in the smaller one. And I can actually uh, rename these to whatever I want. So we'll actually just call this small file, and we'll call this one the big file. Okay? And that's just a way to visually um, separate the two instructions out, or the two programs out. So what I'm going to do now is come over here to the small file, and um, we have a couple of options here. Um, we have things like just a, basically a, an offset, so I could come over here and change like the Y to 5, and you can see the, the shape that we made just jumps up to 5 inches. Or I can switch this option right here called modal from not modal over to modal. And then I can insert a, it's called a mill point, which is just an XYZ location. And it puts that um, shape at 0, 0, and then I can type in another mill point at two inches. So basically I've taken this one G-code file and I've repeated it two times. Okay. 
um, at each of these locations. And I can do that as many times as I want. I can actually right click. Every time I right click, it adds a mill point and it um, reproduces that shape up there. So now, of course, since all these locations are just pulling from the original small G code file, I can come over here and make a change to this. We'll say changes to uh, one and a half for the radius. Hit update, and you can see all of these um, repeated patterns are all pulling from that um, um, original G code file. Okay, and um, so that worked out well. So now the um, last thing I'll show real quick are just our G54 through G59 offsets, which are typical um, of most G codes. Just, these are just fixture offsets or machine uh, offsets. And then we also have our table of tools. So we can bring up a table of one of the tools from there and you can get a graphical representation of what it's going to look like on the screen. You can edit the shank profile right here in this, in this page. And this has our, um, our length offset and our diameter offset for tool compensation. Okay, um, so that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the whole G-code system. Okay, thanks.